May we go on with what we were talking about the other day, day before yesterday morning. How difficult it is, we said, to face facts. Facts being that which is actually taking place now. The word actual not the potential or the possible, but, as in French, what is now, what's going on. And for most of us it's very difficult to face that, without any distortion or deviation or the division between the observer and they observed the actual thing that's going on and the one who is watching that which is happening. That's what we came to in our talk the other day. Shall we go on from that? In relation to that, so you said something the other day which I hope you'll go into a little bit more. You said thought is a deviation which have many implications in seeing a fact. Yes. We spoke of thought as a deviation. That's right. I, we said, How yes. We'll go into that presently. May we go on with this? Do all of, most of us want to? Yes. <clears throat> Can we, each one of us, face the fact, the actual reaction, which we call fear. That's what we are discussing, the whole question of fear. Watching it without the interference of thought, which naturally distorts or moves away or deviates from that which is actually taking place. And is there the division between that which is happening psychologically, inwardly, and the one who is observing what is taking place? That's the question we must seriously go into, because where there is division between the observer and the observed, or the thinker and the thought, there must be conflict, there must be contradiction, there must be either control, suppression or running away. The observer imposing what he thinks is right according to his, value, his values, his tradition, his conditioning. So we must really understand this question very carefully and deeply, whether there is such a division between the <coughs> actual reaction that is going on within us, when there is fear, and the one who says, I am afraid, and so there is a separation from the entity or the thinker that says, I am different from the fear. Because if you see, this is a question which leads into rather complex things, which is, if the division exists, then the, the doer, the actor, the observer, the thinker can operate on that which he is observing. Then he can control, shape, alter. And that's what we traditionally we have been doing. And 
we're asking now, is such a division between the observer and that which is actually going on, is it a reality? We have made it into a reality because it's become our tradition, our habit to to divide me and the not me, we and they, my belief and your belief, and so on, so on, so on. Now, is this an actual fact that that which is happening? Can it be observed without the observer, without the one who says, I can do something about it? Then, if it can be done, then if we remove entirely and completely the whole question of conflict between this and that. I hope I'm making myself clear. Please don't listen to me. I'm nobody. But let us, each one of us, find out the truth of it. How about the question, Richard, that when something is happening, you actually can't observe? You cannot observe. In other words, if I get up and uh, I have an inclination to. Uh, run down the road, or I have an inclination to hit someone, that inclination, if I observe it, is already happened after I... the observation is already after it happened. That is already happened, and therefore you're, the, the observer created. But as it is happening, which is the fact, that's what we are discussing, not after it has happened or before it will happen. But actually, as it is happening, so if we are interested, if we are concerned with the question of struggle, conflict, then we must find out if it is at all possible to eliminate in life every sense of conflict in oneself in one's relationship, and so on, so on. Is that possible? We say, I, am, I say it is possible only when the division between, psychologically the division between the observer and that which is actually going on, when there is no such division, then you eliminate altogether conflict. When there is such a division, the, uh, the observer then can analyse that which is happening and go into the whole process of analysis and so on, which we won't go into for the moment. But if it is not, if there is no actual division, then that which is happening undergoes a radical transformation. That's all my point. Is there in that observation, would, would you define, or may we say that, that there is a certain degree of thought in that? No. But what is it... I, I will, you made a statement. Just let's make it clear. When we observe, when there is division, then thought is an operation. Thought then can say, I will control it, I will run away from it, I will suppress it, I will analyse it, and go through all that process. When the when there is no observer, who is the very essence of thought, which is the past, I don't know if you're following all this, then there is only actually what is happening. Can that actuality, the fact, be observed 
without the movement of thought. If you, if the movement of thought takes place, then you are acting from the past, and therefore distorting it, deviating it, run away from it, and so on, so on, so on. Full stop. How do you describe that, that uh, examination? Pardon? We leave the qualities of thought out, which are from the past, which are value judgments, which are associations. If we could say that when the observer and observed are not that those qualities are not present, then what is going on? But then what? Find out. Don't ask me. I'll tell you. I mean, uh, if we can discuss this, you see, not then, don't, if you say, what's then going on, then you're, you're asking an abstract, hypothetical question. There is no, according to me, if I may be totally wrong, I may live, I may live in an illusion, etc., etc., but I don't think so. When I say there, then there is no operation of thought at all. Then there is pure observation. Just a minute. And in that observation, the thing that which is being observed undergoes a change, a movement, a mutation. No, I, th- I think you're wrong there. I think it's Good. not observation. Huh? I think there's pure happening, what? which follows, is followed by observation, but the pureness is in the happening, not in the observing. I don't follow this. In other words, if, if I say to you, uh, what do you what, see what, just in this room? Sir, What is it you don't agree with? I think that the happening, happening, is the primary thing, and observing is something that follows behind. I see. That is, the, the happening at the moment of anger, there is no observer. Only the observer comes into operation, into function, a moment or a second later. That's obviously. Then, the, the operator, the doer, the thinker, acts upon it, and then the whole problem of conflict arises. Now, can you observe that happening without the whole rigmarole of thought of coming into it? Only if one is interested, and not on the defensive, against What's the fact. What? Only if one is really interested to see, and not on the defensive against the fact at all. I don't, I don't quite understand. <clears throat> this happened to me following your last talk. Not my thought. <clears throat> I won't, please, no, no, forgive no. me. Sorry, I didn't make <laughs> myself clear. I was accused of something, a fact, that I'd done something I should not have done. And, no, you see, the moment you say I should not have done. No, I was accused of something that they, they said I should not have done. And I looked at that moment at what was being said. And it was true what was being said. My relationship was with the truth of this observation. Sir, no, my, not my relationship with truth. Or, sir, I am angry. Right? Suppose I am I'm angry. There is anger. Not I am angry. There is anger. Can I, is there an observation of that feeling that a reaction without the whole movement of thought coming into it. That's all my question. For, for the most part, there isn't. Most of the time, there isn't. Most of the time, there is the, the anger and then the observer looking at that anger and thinking that it's separate. So could we take a look at the process by which we move from that state of the observer being different from the observed to where the observer would be the observed. In other words, that's the observer being the observed is not the normal state, is not the normal frame of mind, is not the normal consciousness. So could we take a look at how that could come about? Uh, Scott, would you consider for a moment 
observing if that which is happening now, just to observe, can you do it? Can I observe my jealousy? Can one observe jealousy as it is taking place? Not say it's right or wrong or rationalize it, why should not be, but just to as it arises, as a flower blooms. Just to watch it. When you ask, can I observe? Not that, sir, not I. Can there you? already is the division. No, no. I, that's first of the part. I mean, that's a way of talking, which is, please, not I. Of, all right. There is jealousy. Is it possible to observe that reaction, which is called jealousy, without the movement of thought? In other words, can there be constant awareness? No, I don't want to in otherness. Can, you see, a moment to go off into something, then it becomes what is awareness and so on, so, complicated. So the moment you use the word observe it, or can, I, or can one observe it or whatever, there is a duality implied. Or I've said that, sir. Observer implies a duality. I agree. But uh, you Try it, Shankar. Just me. You're jealous on, sometimes. Oh, can you watch? What, are, what is your actual feeling now? Bafflement. Huh? Baff, 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 puzzle. Can you watch that puzzle, that state of the mind which is in puzzle? Just watch it. Not saying I must be clear what he's talking. Just watch it. See. Huh? There seems to be, at some point, a physical resistance to that, to that watching. Why? Is it physical? The gentleman says there is a certain resistance physically to watch, because you are not comfortably seated, mm. or is it happening in the bus, or when you are walking? No, or are you saying there must be certain relaxation to observe? No, some disturbance that you feel in the body, a, a physical reaction to to the watching. Why should there be? I don't know. I, I'm asking, sir. So why should there be a physical reaction to watching? Maybe I don't know. Please, all of this is supposed to be a discussion in which each one of us takes part, not one or two, and the rest keeps silent and listen. Isn't it... Sorry. I was going to ask you, actually, when you... For instance, I think you're saying that if you're looking at fear, just trying to watch it, you're saying there's a physical resistance. Is this what you're saying? Not especially at fear. Because I would have thought the reason is because you want an answer. The mind always seems to want an answer to a problem instead of just... Opening up. It's exactly that. So when, when you start staying with something, at some point there's like a refusal, physical refusal. You feel it in your body. You can't hear back here. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It seems that at some point, where, when you kind of started to stay with the fact, uh, there is a physical refusal in your body to go along with that. Because that refusal may be the result of stray. Just wait. Don't say no. Or your body is not comfortable, or there is a certain sense of resistance to the intensity of watching. Perhaps, yes. Hmm? The physical resistance to watching intensely. Because perhaps is it that we are not used to watching anything intensely? The moon, the sky, the trees, the whatever it is, to watch. Now, can we put the question differently? Apparently, this seems to be rather difficult. All this. Why should thought interfere with anything psychologically? 
would you, am I putting? Some, somehow or other time comes in. Uh, and just a minute. The that, that there is the experience of jealousy, the, the immediate event seems to be, well, if I indulge the jealousy, what's the result of it? All that's implied thinking, isn't it, sir? I'm asking, can I observe, is there an observation? The mood, hmm? without the interference of thought? It is a state huh? of mind. Huh? It's a state of mind, of awareness. No, 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 I, don't, please, sir, don't introduce state of mind aware. I'm just asking, can you watch the moon without thought drawing a curtain across it? Occasionally. No? Yes? Occasionally. Huh? Right Occasionally. Word. Occasionally? Occasionally. All right. Can you watch a movement of cloud occasionally? Now, can you watch your reactions in the same way? Yes. Just, uh? Yes. This morning I have occasionally the experience of... <coughs> Not you, sir. Just to watch something without any movement of thought. It's just a, a subjective experience inside oneself. Is it a, a, a necessity, a kind of thought? What? Because it's inside, it's not an outside thing that you can just look at uh, and not indulge in thought about it. Because it doesn't affect us. When it, no, but when it's inside, Unless it's we are loony. In a sense, an abstraction. It's going on in the mind. So can I? Can there be an observation without abstraction? Put it ten well, different ways. Would it, would it be called an observation? Do I give up or do you give up? There, there can be, there can be, and there, there sometimes is, but it's, uh, it's infrequent. Sir, so, may I ask another question? Has it ever occurred to you that it's possible to live without any conflict? That's totally different. Huh? That's totally different. No, 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 it's not. It's not. I am not the moon. No, 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 sir. I move, I move the same thing, which is, we live in conflict, right? Now, I'm asking a question related to what, what, what previously we talked about, the conflict between me, the duality. I'm asking a question, is it possible to live, if you have aroused yourself, without conflict? Have you? between yourself, your wife, between yourself and somebody else, and conflict within yourself? Yes, when one says, why should there be conflict? One is implying. What, sir? When one says, why should there be conflict? One is implying that there must... No, have you ever asked, uh, have you ever asked yourself? Not until you suggested it the other day. Yes. Huh? Not until you suggested it. So I suggest to you, all right, have you found out that that is possible or not possible? It is possible. Huh? It is possible. Oh, no. Then it is not, you're already saying, if it is possible, it is possible, then you have blocked it. Or if you say it's not possible, you have blocked it. But to find out whether it's possible to live without conflict implies the observer, there should be no division. Right? Oh, I'm a... Right. No, yes. I do not agree. What well, don't you but agree? There is a division between me and the moon. I know, moon, sir. Yes, you're talking about the moon. There's no conflict there. No, there's no conflict, that's right. But there is division. No, Real because division. the moon doesn't very much affect us, unless we are peculiar <laughs> neurotically. Eh? <laughs> moon does affect that, but if we are not, peculiar, 
We say, I said, it's easy to look. One may look at the moon intensely for some time, because it doesn't affect us deeply. But can I equally observe? Can there be observation of our reaction without any shadow of uh, thought? That's what we are discussing. From that arises whether it is possible to live a life without any sense of conflict. And conflict exists wherever there is division, right? Right, sir? The Jew, the Arab, the Dutch and the Malays and the English and, the, and so on, the division, national division, psychological division, religious division and so on. Now I'm a, so I, as long as there is a division in oneself, there must be conflict. That's obvious, sir, right? You agree, sir? Right. If you say so, how is one to eliminate that conflict? They have tried different ways. Hmm? That is, identify yourself with God, God will save you, abandon yourself to God, some principle, or surrender yourself to something greater, forget yourself, we have tried all those various systems which we hope to elim- that we eliminate this conflict, right? But it hasn't, right? So I am asking a question which is, as long as there is division in, my, in the observer and the observed, there must be conflict, because there is division, right? Now, that is that division artificially created by thought, or is it actual? You follow my question? If it is actual, hmm, in the sense, which is not, which is not an illusion, not a fancy. If the division is actual, then I must live forever in conflict. One must live, right? If the division is not true, accurate, factual, then as there is no conflict, right? Then the very thing which, were, which is being observed undergoes a change. I cannot put it more different. Sir, what one is observing is often thought itself. <coughs> so are you saying that the change comes about in thought itself? Yes, sir. Can you observe? Is the, not you. Is, can thought? Please, just listen for fun. Can thought observe itself? Huh? We acknowledge thoughts going through our minds. No, no, just no, not through our. Just so I'm asking a question, which is, can is there an observation of thought by thought, or can thought itself be conscious of its own movement? <laughs> what? One thought can say, I'll watch the other thought moving, and so control it, shape it, and so on. But I'm asking a different question, which is, can thought be conscious of itself as move, as a movement? Are you saying that the whole of thought is what is conscious of thought? What, sir? Are you saying that the whole of thought is conscious of thought, not one part of thought? That's right. Whole thought. I mean, yes, the essence of the whole of thought. Of course, thought is is, yes. thought is the whole of thought. Yes, but, I, yes, but usually we say one part of thought is conscious well, of thought. You understood. You understood what, doctor? Mm-hmm. One thought is part of the whole. So can one, can thought, which is the whole, be aware of itself? But that's 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. Thought is fragmentary, right? Yes, but not always. Wait. Can thought, which is fragmentary, can that thought be aware of itself? But then that thought as a whole. No, but particular thought. Let's leave the whole for the moment, so that it's a little more complex. Can say you have a particular thought. No. <laughs> you have a particular thought, a thought, a thought. Can that a thought be conscious of itself? Not other thought is conscious of it. So that thought doesn't move. Huh? That, that thought has to be conscious of itself, right? But if it uh, moves, it cannot be conscious of itself. No, it, it, it becomes another thought. I don't quite follow this. See, if you say the thought is to be conscious of itself. I'm asking, sir, can con let's put it leave out thought. Yeah. Can consciousness yeah. be aware of itself? Consciousness being the whole content of its thought. I see, I don't want to bring in whole and all that. Can, can any kind of, of consciousness be aware of itself, or must it be a, a particular kind of consciousness? In other words, look, could the look, kind Scott, of consciousness look, Scott, which... Look, just a minute. You know, what your con you know what your consciousness is, do you? No. The not... not not fully, no. Most of the time I'm just caught up. No, no. Where it's, just, it's if you look up, please, just listen. Your consciousness is made up of its content, right? Right? The content is your jealousy, anxiety, fear, love, hate, uh, sexual demands, the whole human endeavor, struggle, pain, pleasure, sorrow, death, and so on. The whole of that is, is made up of all these little parts, right? Yes. Now, can that consciousness be aware of itself, or is that not possible? And what? will you just differentiate this from thought, this is something different? No, no, I'm I moved away for the moment. It must it must be you're saying the whole of that 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 whole consciousness must be aware of itself, no particular aspect of it. Yes, put it that way for life. What in the world does that mean? What? The whole of consciousness to be aware of its whole self. Is that what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> what does it mean to you? There are two ways. No, what does it mean to you? To me it Don't ask me. To me, it means a confused entity looking at itself. I give up. Huh? I say, to me, it means a confused entity looking at itself. Krishnaji, can, can I just ask, isn't this, isn't this a matter of seeing something, understanding something false which is going on in the mind, and that coming to an end? And then the possibility of something else. I mean, I can't, if I think now about being aware of my whole consciousness, and I make effort to be aware of my whole consciousness, I mean, that's just, you know, that has no meaning. You know, we began by asking, on Thursday morning, the day before yesterday, can we observe a fact, right? The fact, we mean by fact, that which is actually taking place, not a second later or a minute later, but actually that which is going on, which is happening, not happened and then observed, but the very happening itself, right? That's what we were discussing. Uh, let's, think, let's forget all that we have said. Now, that's all I'm asking. 
I put it in ten different ways. So that is the central issue that we are trying to talk over together and find whether it's possible to look at, to observe that which is actually taking place. That's all. Krishna can I just ask, would you say that it's, re- it's, it's simple to do this? Really, in essence, it's simple to do this. Would you just say it's a simple thing to do? Now, I, I, this is what, it, what you're saying, how I interpret it, what it looks like to me. A thought comes into the mind, that's all. There's the thought. That's the fact. There's no movement, no... Nothing no, you're just aware of the fact. There's more than... More than that, sir. I'm just. Could I ask, uh, when you say uh, act, observe what is actually happening now? Now, at first, it appears that what is happening takes time. You see, uh, there's one a thought comes in, another comes in. Is that what you are talking about when you say what is actually happening? <laughs> no, I'm uh, I'm lost with all this. Can I? Uh, Good job. Right. Come uh, in and join us. what you're um, <laughs> saying, that there must be a form of immediate apprehension in observation, which is then followed rapidly by thought, but which precedes thought. That's right. Then you're, you're, you apprehend a feeling, then you move away from that feeling, by a thought. A thought that's right. That's right. That's, yeah, right. that's right. Can you, as <coughs> the professor has pointed out, Miss Wilkin, <coughs> can you apprehend that which is happening? It seems so extraordinarily difficult. What's, am I cooking uh, or what? I experience the fact that there's so much movement towards grabbing hold of what's happening. If something's happening, it's really happening. <laughs> Let that's, me that's so, really happening. look. We have been envious, haven't we? Yeah. Huh? Now wait a minute. You know what the feeling of it is? Can you is there an observation <coughs> of that envy as it arises? Just to observe that which is happening, this called envy. Can I put it a different way? What about, let's just start with the envy. Now, a real, living, actual event, envy, is before any observation. In other words, it really happens. That's what, that's what Professor yes. said, sir. That yes. which is happening. Right. Now, now can stay I, with that. St- that's what I stay with that. No I'm, observing. Well, it, all night. I'll use another word. Stay with that. Okay. <laughs> you bring time into it. Just, just, uh, it's just being the feeling, isn't it? You just feel it. No. Just be the feeling. That's why we don't think physically and psychologically to something that's later called envy. Is that right? You're just the feeling. Oh, you're just the feeling. And as soon as the thought now we began, the So we began by asking. We were talking about fear. Can you... Is there an observation of fear as it is happening? That's all. To put it very, very simply, out a lot of words. Well, the funny thing is, as soon as I observe, it seems to go... It's hiding to me. It disappears. Now, does it disappear? So that it doesn't return ever. I don't know. Ah. <laughs> or is it something because you are observing with attention and it goes? Mm-hmm. Wait, wait. You. So, if you, it's only when there's inattention fear comes. Yeah, very well. Yeah. I th- huh? Yeah. So, then what is that attention? It's like space, isn't it? Huh? It's like space. No, it's not like what we are saying, what is that attention? (coughs) You've simply taken the focus off the sensation of fear 
and on to and focusing on something called attention. Therefore, the fear diminishes. It's like looking at that wall. No, at no. That wall. As the gentleman, as he pointed out, Maria, please, he's, don't explain it away, just see what he said. He says, if I, when, the, when I attend to that fear, it disappears. And I ask, we asked, is there, does that fear return in another form? So doesn't that indicate, <coughs> I'm just asking, <coughs> that when there is a tension, fear is not? Yeah. Huh? So can I attend <laughs> fear, which is taking place, with that attention? That's, you follow, so we are putting it ten different can ways. I put it this way? No, I want to stick to yeah. not your yeah, way. I, I, I know, but if I'm confused, <coughs> if I stick with my confusion, now the confusion may disappear, but I don't know any. I still don't know anything. I'm still in the same state. Ah, no, no, I am confused. One is confused, and I and I watch and I attend to that confusion. Look, attend, give attention to that confusion. For the moment, it's not. Right. So I've learned something, which is, when there is a tension, the confusion is not. Yeah, but then he put his finger on something important there, which is the fact that the way you say it, when there is a tension, confusion is not. But equally, there is something there that is not uh, thought. In other words, there's a new state. That's also... Yes, but that new state is where he talked. He, he, he wanted away from that. What's that? He said he, he was in a new state. When confusion... Not he not. was in a new state. <laughs> right, yes. But, sir, you asked, what is this attention? This most extraordinary thing, this attention. I don't know what it is. I can't find out. But I know it's an extraordinary thing. I, I do not know what it is. Uh, we can go into that, sir. Can you... Let me put the question differently. Can you... When there is fear, can you attend... Is there an attention to that... of that fear? Attention? That's all I'm asking. We're all discussing. When there is attention, will there be fear? So, does attention contain or hold thought? No. <laughs> Mr. you implied in when you say, can there be attention there, that there is no movement of thought. So... You have to find this out, sir. That is, I'm asking, is there in that state of attention any movement of thought. But it merely seems to me that this attention doesn't belong to me. It's a non-physical or non... It's not yours. That's, no. all, that's not your... I agree. It's nobody's. <laughs> but, Krishnaji, could... What, what do these things... Could we examine what this really means? Because here is the brain that is, say, feeling fear or whatever the emotion now you, the attention comes about. Uh, what is going on in the brain? The brain is looking at. Would you want to discuss that? Yes. Because wait, I wait, Maria. Maria. Wait, Maria. Please, for God's sake, go slowly. Do you, I don't know. You may be interested, but the others may not be interested. So I'm asking. When there is attention, she asks, "What is going on in the brain?" Don't you want to find out what yes, goes on? Yes. Yeah. I would rather understand how attention comes about. Wait, so we'll what come. Is happening. Gee, we can come to all this slowly, please. Does this attention use the brain? 
is attention to be learnt, practised and repeated? I attend. There is an attention about something and that thing disappears. Then I say, by Joe, I've learned something, I'll attend. I'll keep on attending. I'll practice attention. Then it's nothing. Then it's gone. <coughs> right? So Maria asks, what is the quality or the state of the mind, the brain, that when there is total attention? Right, sir? Is it so? Are you interested in this? Very active, I think. Huh? Highly active. Huh? The brain is highly active in that state of attention. I don't know. Yeah. We're going to inquire, sir. We're going to. Don't let us state anything definite. What do you say, Dr. Woman, sir? You're all experts at this. What is the quality or the state of the brain when there is total attention? Does the brain become quiet? Huh? Does the brain become quiet? The brain, you suggest, becomes quiet. Ah, wait, child, wait. Does attention spring from quietness? Or your answer, you see, your. No, don't get, don't, 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 I don't know, we are inquiring on board. So, the funny thing, as soon as I have intention, why does everything disappear? We, sir, that's not the problem, so please, we're asking... I want what, to look at it. What is the state of your brain, the brain, mm -hmm. when there is complete attention? Why are you looking at me? Isn't it general Bird in the cage? <laughs> Isn't it general overall attention? Or is it attending to, to something? I want to find out, one wants to find out what attention means and if there is such a thing as attention. What is happening to the brain? That's all our question, right? Right, sir? <coughs> Pundits? <laughs> well, I think you might say that uh, you know, the brain, people who do research on the brain don't really... What, sir? Uh, the people who do research on the brain don't understand attention and they admit it openly. What? I don't quite... I just, that the people who work on the brain do not understand what attention is, and they admit it. So you see, are they working on the brain objectively, something over there, or the right. brain here? Well, they, uh, they work objectively. Ah, then we'll have gone off to something else. Yeah. But children have attention naturally, don't they? What? As children. I don't know about children. Don't bring in children. <laughs> this is impossible to discuss. I want, don't you want to find out, sir, for yourself, what this attention is and what is the quality of the brain, your brain, not objective brain under a microscope and uh, operation and all the rest of it, what is the quality of it when you are totally attentive? It doesn't produce... No, don't say, please, sir, just, we haven't... Don't we have the most evidence for inattention? What? I say we can, we can look at inattention, but then oh. we don't have attention. All right, look at your inattention. Okay. <laughs> We're talking, are we talking about a focused attention, in this case on inattention, if you like, or something, or are we just talking about something uh, without focus called attention? Are you attending? 
when, 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 when one is speaking to you? Yes. I am speaking to you now. Yes. Are you attending? Yes. What do you mean by attending? The attention is focused. No, no what do you mean? No, Maria, just listen carefully. Don't say attend, just listen. You are listening now to me, which means I hope you are attending. What do you mean by that word attending? Don't don't say focusing, just find out. Which means you are listening to what I have to say. You know we both of us know English, therefore you are able to understand the word in, hmm, word, the words, and you know the words are not the thing that he is trying to convey, right? So you are not taught in words. And you are listening with your ears hmm? and also observing what is being said through your optical nerves and so on, so on, so on. So you, your whole nervous, physical uh, organism is, is alert, listening, watching, right? Would you call that attention? But well, keep it simple, don't well. <laughs> there are lots more I can add. Just keep to one thing. But in that is left out what to me is the whole uh, meaning of the whole emotion. What would you call? You see, you are going off, you are doing something which I'm... It's impossible to talk about. I'm asking, when you listen totally, is there registration? No. 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 I cannot. You, one says yes, one says no, you say yes. Is there? Find out before I answer. Yes, sir. This is the initial. Yes. Open minded, that's a rather difficult word. The open minded generally means a mind that's like a sieve, everything falls in, everything you want. <laughs> but I'm not asking something. So, very simple, sir. It seems that there's a sensory energy, sensory energy that is vastly more aware. And then the words take a quite different form. So I'm asking. Do we attend to anything? Attend. If we were attending now, we would understand you. Not me! Well, we would understand what, what is being said. You would, you would understand your own... You would understand what attention means, mm -hmm. not what I mean by attention. Mm -hmm. Do you know what attention is? Mm -hmm. Maria says, attention implies focusing. You are focusing on what I am saying, and therefore you think you are attending. I say that is not attending. I may be wrong, but I want you to question me out presently. That is, when I listen to you in attention, something that you are saying seriously, there is immediate, there is no registration, immediate understanding. Wait, wait, find out what I have said. I think perhaps our problem is that our thought is so quick, it comes in so quickly. I know. And I, in a way that Is it, 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 I mean, it's so quick? It's, it's is it that we don't listen? Yes, I think we always move away one step. Yeah, wait a minute, lady. Do, do you listen to the fact, to this statement? Just, I'm making a statement. 
Can you observe? Is there an observation of that which is actually taking place? That's the question. That's a statement. Do you listen to that? Or do you say, well, what does he mean by attention? What does he mean by fear? Just wait, just what does he mean by observing? So you're off. Yes, that's what Whereas, can you listen to that statement and the impact of that statement hmm, and in that attention is there any registration at all? There is a verbal communication, you have understood each other, English. But is there the registration of the statement, the meaning of that statement, the, the effect of that statement in your observation, all the rest of it? Are you inclined to do something with what you have said? You have made a, a statement. Now, I've got to understand the statement. No! No! Not no! Wait, wait, sir. I say to you, I love you. Hmm? You say, wait, just me, just me, just me. Let me understand what you mean by it. You mean love, what? Sexual? You don't go through all that circus. No, but no I'm, ask, I'm asking. You say, can I observe something? I'm, not, I'm asking something. No, I'm asking something. When a woman or a man comes up to you and says, I really love you. And he means it, not just some kind of trick to catch you or something like that. When, I'm, when there's a statement made like that, with full meaning, I really love you, do you go through all this mental process? I don't know, you may, probably you do. The funny thing, at such a moment there is a complete... No, no, sir, I am asking... It's not what is taking place. I am asking, if I may... I am not being impatient, sir, but you you are not asking my question. How do you listen to a man or a woman who tells you from his heart and means it that he loves you? What takes place? Do you register that statement and remember it and say, yes, I remember you told me you loved me? You follow, sir? So I'm asking. In registration, I mean, in attention, is there any registration at all? In attention, when there is attention, there is already a focusing, but it is not the focusing of an asset of concentration. giving out of attention and the giving out of love. Aren't they both the same, sir? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> yes, aren't they both the same? <coughs> when a man or a woman comes to you and says, I loved you, because he is so tremendously at you follow? And you say, yes, that's jolly nice, but tell me all about it. What, sir? I have more interest in the lack of intention because that's the problem. Lack of? Lack of intention. <laughs> lack of attention. attention. Because that's the problem. No, no, that's not the problem. It was my problem. No, sir, it's not your problem. It's all our problem. All right. All right. Could, we, could we say that when, when someone comes up and says 
very sincerely that they that they love you could we say that there is an impact yes and then what well then how does this impact differ from a registration in other words this it has an effect there is there is an impact of some kind look it's called just listen to me would you listen to me for a minute second When I say to you, I really mean it, I love you, do you, is there an impact? Yes. Yeah, do, is there? Or, what is, tell me your own thing, what, what, what takes place? There seems to be something that wants to exist in order to hold on to it. Yes. So, you're not listening to what I'm saying. You are listening to your own reactions, hmm? your own uh, uh, responses. You say, how, how very nice of him. He's a nice man, he's a beautiful woman, I'm so glad. Huh? But you, you haven't received what he has told you. No, I don't agree with you there. I think something has happened. Something actually happened, you say it, Something happens, it's a it's a carry forward. There's a whole it's a, a million events have occurred. That's right, sir. As he Mr. Wilkins pointed out, attention may be love. Hmm? And when there is attention and love which is equals love, do you register? That's a now, most of us are inattentive, not attentive. Can you move inattention to attention? You follow? That's your question, sir. Can you make inattention by some miracle turn it into attention? Or be aware of it, um, not attention, that very awareness is attention. Kapita. Yes. No, we are going off from Edward. You see how re we refuse to face a fact. That's all I'm getting at. We refuse to face the fact that we are frightened. Frightened animals or human beings, or lovely human beings. We are frightened. Can we look at that fear? Can we pay attention to that fear? Well, to do that, huh? one must be in step with fear to pay attention to it. And there's, if one is in step, there's no step before, there's no step afterwards. Sir, that's not. You, you know what fear is? Yes. Both physical and psychological. Can you, can you observe that fear as it is taking place? That's all. I'm always afraid when I'm not attentive. So you're afraid of not being attentive. Now face that fear. That's attention. Attention. No, no. Look at it. So don't say attention. Look this. That. Just find out. You can look at that fear. I'm afraid of losing attention. I'm seeking the reward of attention. Sure. Of course, of course, that is all gone. 
Or are you going to say so? It would seem to me that when you, what just happened here is there was a tension when you said what you said, and then somebody said there's a fear that they started trying to hold on to. And <coughs> it seems to me that that's where the fear is. Right, right when you, you say, I love you, there are a thousand things that happen, and right in there is the fear. I don't quite follow. Uh, there's fear in what happens when there is a tension. Look here, Dr. Schoenberg, my question is very simple. I'm going to keep on persisting. <laughs> You're all deviating from that question. Can you look at your fear? Stay with it. Stay with it in the sense, no thought deviating from that fact. The fact being that which is going on. That is that which is happening, the actual. The actual is the now. Can you watch it? Can you use the word focus, whatever? Can you observe that thing without any movement, both physical and non physical? As soon as I do that, it disappears. Which means that we've been through that, sir. We've been through that. It disappears because you're attentive at that moment. Hmm? Then so, what happened? Huh? Then what happened? Th then does that fear recur, come back? And then you say, I must be attentive, and it'll disappear. So you play this game. So you have learnt a trick for the moment <coughs> that being attentive to that thing, it disappears. You have learnt that trick, so you, you practice that trick. But fear hasn't gone. Which means what? You have merely learnt a trick, a mental trick. I, one wants to find out if one is at all awake, intelligent. Say, is it possible to be free of fear altogether? Not, more, not this superficial trick of attention and disappearance and coming back. And <coughs> that's all too. I want to ask you a much more serious, fundamental question, which is: Can fear disappear altogether? Never to return. Otherwise, I'm playing games. You automatically enter in the field of desire, I think. No, no fear. I, I don't want to enter. Please, sir, stick to one word and then go into it. Well, when you say desire, of course, desire is, has its fears. There are many forms of fears desire and so on. Don't, and we're talking fear at the very root of the fear at its very root. Suppose I say no. Huh? Um, to me, the answer is no. Then what will you do? Just live in fear? I don't know what I'll do. I'll ah, but there. that's what you're doing when you say, I don't know. That's a fact. I don't ah, know. So, no. When you say, I don't know, the thing goes on under you. Like <laughs> you're on a bridge which says, I don't know. But the water of fear is flowing. Now, now, can you stop that water of fear end? Well, if if presumably the the fear cannot be stopped, well then no. we we automatically accept it. I can't stop it. Let it go. And then that's when it disappears. <laughs> but that, that is something we can't attain. You see, you're talking of attainment, you're talking of 
uh, stopping. I am not. I say I want to understand the whole movement of fear, how it arises, what is its structure, nature, the whole works of fear. I can't stop it, because okay. who is the entity that's going to stop it? Something different from fear. Is it? That's you see, you just invent these things, so you don't... We've been through that. The entity that wants to stop yes. it is part of fear. So he's playing a trick. He's mesmerized, living in an illusion. When I say, I'll stop fear. Sir, being attentive 24 hours a day. I never said that. Sir. No, but I'm saying that. That will end the trick, because then it won't come back. So be attentive the whole 24 hours. I'm, I'm, it's not, do nothing, it's, it's okay, you pick up a phrase out of its context and say do nothing. I didn't no, say no, no, no. Because uh, I think our fear uh, are usually based on, we, 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 we have or we are something where we, we don't want to lose it or um, something which we have a certain idea or we have a certain a comfort whereby we don't want to lose it or some memory of pain which we don't want, it doesn't want, we don't like it to happen. Look, Tunki, this is my point. May I be <coughs> repeat again? One is afraid. There is a great deal of fear in life of many, many, many kinds. We are not dealing with many kinds, but fear itself, just a minute. And what is this fear? How does it come into being? Whether it's possible to end it, not I stop it, whether it's possible to end it. That's my whole question. How does it arise? What is the root from which it springs? Right? What is its beginning? I know what the ending is, darkness, uh, you know, all the rest of the ugliness of fear. So I want to find, is, is it possible to find out the root of fear? Huh? What do you say is the root of fear? Huh? The sense of identity. No, root, sir, root. Identity takes place when there is fear. Because I'm afraid to run, a, uh, afraid of this thing, I must cling on to something which will get rid of it. I must, please, sir, what is the beginning of fear? Being inattentive. <laughs> no, don't use that. <laughs> no. So isn't it when you feel insecure in any way that fear... Is it that the root of fear, the desire for security? The root of fear to find some absolute, indestructible security? And as there is no such thing, so you're back again. What is the beginning, the root, the source of fear? Thought. Huh? Thought. Who says it? Right. What's that? Thought. Right. Have you found this out for yourself? Or are you repeating what this person has said? What do you say, sir? I say that in the, when you say to me something that I really listen to you, 
and some, there's an event that at that moment fear is born. And that's all I can say. No, sir. Look, it, sir. It's an, at an event. No, no, say. no, no, don't call it event. Just between two of us, talking casually or seriously, I said, look, Dr. Schoenberg, what, what is the beginning of it? She seems to be, everyone has a child, the grown-up man and the dying man, and every human being has some kind of this tribulation, this movement, hmm? which we call fear. We both of us agree what it is. And I said, look, what is the beginning of it? Like a river. You know where it begins? The source. Mm -hmm. It gets wider and wider, or narrower and narrower, and dies. Mm -hmm. But we are talking the river, which why it goes on. Mm -hmm. And I say, what? Where is? Where does it begin? Deception. Huh? Isn't it deception? Illusion. That is it from illusion. Illusion of what? Who has created this illusion? Who has created this deception? And that gentleman said, the real root of fear, the thought, is thought. Here comes this time, the idea of time. Huh? My thought is time, that's the no, idea. No, no, the thought, just hold on to it for a second. Is that so? I've stated many times, I may be wrong, but I've stated it, and I want you to prove that I'm an idiot and I live in illusion, that the whole movement of fear comes from thought. Thought would say, I must have security. Thought says, I must be attached, otherwise I'm lost. Thought would say, uh, where is there security? And invents, believes, gods, Jesuses, and Christs, and the Buddhas, and follow all that. So uh, we say, the root of fear is thought. Show it to me, sir. Well, I, my, my sense of it is that you can say that to me, and that doesn't add one inch to my illumination of the fact that when you say to me, I love you... Ah! I am... No, you're not listening to this. No! <laughs> you're not listening to it. It is as potential as I love you. It is as vital as the other. Which is thought is the source of fear. Do you listen to it? No. You have all kinds of conclusions. That's all. I, I said I may be wrong. I want you to show me I'm wrong. Which means that you first must listen. And you can't listen if you say, well, Sorry, I disagree with you. You have your this, your that, and you off. Oh. I think the only suggestion I have about your being wrong is that maybe that the thought uh, that it is lack of love which precedes the thought, uh, rather than the uh, the uh, the other way around. All right. If it is the lack of love, then I have not get it. Ah, no, I think there is. It's not a miracle. I won't say, Jesus will save me. Ma no, but mankind has not been saved by any Jesus. I'm not suggesting the miracle is impossible, but it seems to me that you are suggesting that there is a possible miracle. There is. But we don't capture it, we don't listen to it. It's really deep. 
explicitly enough. There's no fear, but the moment that it is less, I'm wondering what's happening. No, my lady, that's the not what. No, well, that's what I. I'm saying the source of fear of every kind that human beings have is born from thought. Will you listen to that statement as you would listen when I say, I really love you? Because it's too simple. Your mind immediately says, no, that's, that's too damn simple. It's not, uh, it is much more complicated than that. Actually, my mind says it's too complex. Huh? I say, if you want to know what I really, my mind actually says, that's too complex. I'm more interested in my fear. Yes. So, no. Yeah. I'm more, I'm interested to find out the source of it. Not the river that is flowing, the source. In the thought being the, the source, is implied behind that is the self preservation. I said that. Is it self preservation? We said that. Self preservation. All right. Is that the source of it? That is security. Physical security. Is it possible to have complete physical security? Never to be ill, never to have go to the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> I have been there a dozen times. Hmm? <clears throat> Never go to the dentist, doctors, the organism functioning healthily all the time, which is to have complete physical security. Is that possible? That's what thought is trying to do, but thought fails. And thought that says I must have, that's right, sir. Thought says that. I'm just. I'm point, we are pointing out something, so I want to find, <coughs> perhaps, <coughs> if you can tell me what the source of fear is, and I listen to you with great attention, because I want to, really want to find out if fear can disappear totally from my whole thinking, living, acting. Then. You see, thought is the source of it. I, I listen to you. I don't dispute it. I don't say it's right or wrong. I'm going to find out. But first, I must listen to it without any abstraction. Then I see how extraordinary complex it is, and, <clears throat> and in the complexity of it, I may lose its simplicity. I see, thought is the fear. Thought is fear. Thought is time. Thought is measure. I have lived, I have had no pain, now I go to the dentist and I have pain. It has measured, and therefore I am frightened. Hmm? And t thought is time, because tomorrow I've had pain yesterday, and I hope to God tomorrow I won't have it. Time. Right? I'm afraid of death, which is, I'm living now, death may happen, or I invite death and live with it. Life and death, I say all together. I can play all that kind of tricks, but it's still thought. Thought has invented all the churches, all the contents of the churches, 
the symbols, the Jesuses, the rituals, the dogmas, everything. And a Christian world, Jesus will say, say quotes. That I'm afraid of that. Jesus doesn't exist, good Lord, who is going to save me? You follow, sir? Thought has built the most marvellous cathedrals and the most absurd religious illusions inside it. So, show me, as we said, I may be totally wrong, show me. No, show me if I'm wrong, Mr. Keith. Well, you can think of something else which you see. No, no, I'm asking you a simple question, answer directly. I'm, if I'm wrong, I like to be, I like to destroy what I think is true. It may not be true, but you may show me that I, I live in illusion, and I'm willing to examine it. Or, or if, I, if this is true, why don't you take it? Well, there is, there is some, some way. No, no, I don't argue with this. Why don't you, if it is true? Then you must, what is truth, you also must take. If you want to find out the ending of fear. Then what is the source of animal's fear? What, sir? What is the source of animal's fear? Uh, not animal. Please, please, sir, it may, be thought, it may be they have their own instincts, their own. Here, don't enter into animals, please. Oh, well. I think it's the truth that what you say, and so what is the next step? What, sir? I think what you say is the truth, so what is the next step? Next step is, if that is the truth, and I say it is the truth, don't accept it, please, for God's sake, I'm not your guru, or your philosopher, or your analyzer. <coughs> I say, if that is the truth, then the whole question arises, can thought come to an end. Sorry, what? Crap. No, to me it's not a truth. Tunk, Tunki, I must don't walk to something else, Tunki, old boy. Yes, when you question, when it is, it is far between fear, it's not, I mean, it is, it's not fully so, I mean... What is not fully so? Well, there are, there are things which we don't like. I mean, say, we don't know what faith. It is not out of thought. What? <coughs> there are things which we don't want, we don't like. like we, uh, we don't what? We don't, we don't want, we don't want, we don't what? like. We don't like. We don't like. And what? Say, pain. Something painful. Physical pain. It Look, is, can you... You've been to a dentist? Yes. Yes. I'm also a can you, that. at that moment of pain, just remain with that pain. Mm -hmm. Not think about it. And say, well, my God, tomorrow I'll go. Just say yes. He's drilling, pulling, <laughs> all the stuff that goes on. There, hold it. Just. For the last two months I've done this. <laughs> so just a minute. I'm asking you, Doctor. Burma asks a question, which you have, which you, so they don't, they won't listen, they go on with their own ideas. Dr. Burma asks, if that is so, hmm, that is, thought is the source of all evil, <laughs> fear, can that... Then what is the next question? The next question is, this movement of time as thought, and thought as movement of time, can that Stop.
Did you listen to that? Won't you ask that naturally that question? If, if thought is the very root of this fear, then can thought come to an end? Not how can I stop thinking? Now how can, will you tell me the way or the method to end thought? But if you see the truth that thought is the root of this fear, all fear, then your next question would naturally be, healthy question, can this movement of thought as time, time as m movement of thought, can this whole movement come to an end, unwind itself? I find myself asking another question, which in a sense, to you, the other side of the coin, maybe it's the same question. How does thought begin? What? How does thought begin? Oh, that's very really simple, sir. What is the beginning of thought? I don't have to tell you, you can watch yourself. The pleasant experience is registered, brain, hmm? unpleasant thing is registered. So, all registration is the beginning of thought. They keep registering. No, therefore, you ask, is it possible yes. to end registration? Surely yes. that only operating in the actual. What? If thought is always past or future, if you only operate in the actual, you're not actually beginning thought. Oh, I've got to understand, sorry. What did she say, sir? Would you... <coughs> She's saying that thought is in the past and the future. So it's time. I said it's time. time. Yes, but if you're operating in the actual, you are operating without thought. But I think the problem is, well, for me the problem is that I am continually up against registration. So we are asking first, sir, is that statement the root of fear is thought? Is that statement? That. You haven't found that out. <coughs> or am I imposing on you a statement which may be false, which may be inaccurate, and therefore illusive? So you're caught up in that illusion if you accept. If you don't accept, and say, look, is that so? Let's, let's go into yourself, find out. Couldn't one distinguish between <coughs> different types of fear, psychological fear and another type of fear which may be natural, like survival fears or yes, putting that, your hand that, in the fire that, and that kind of stuff? I said, fear, if virus comes tomorrow and hits me, all right, I'll take it. But to be afraid that it might... Mm. Dr. Schoenberg, you have disagreed with it. I know if you agree with it, all your analytical structure collapses. <laughs> forgive me. Disagreement. <coughs> no, I, but I must forgive me. He's talking, he's going to say something. This is really important. I must stop now because I said we must stop at one o'clock now. It's past one. We'll continue tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But this is really important for you. If fear, if fear comes from you, from the very beginning of thought, which is the beginning of thought, is registration. Registration is the memory collected through millennia or the memory gathered 
these last few days, from that arises hope. Then the whole question arises, is there a possibility of not registering psychological events? Do you think it's possible, sir, that I register because my listening is focused? No, no, Mr. Jenkins, please. I'm asking you a question, so I want to... You have to think about it. You can't just say yes or no. It is something uh, a scientist puts forward. You don't say yes, right, wrong, no, I don't accept it. No, it's like he puts it out and for you to study it. I say, look, you're wrong, you're nonsense. What you're saying is so absurd. I haven't said the whole of it. I've just stated one simple fact. As long as thought moves psychologically, there must be fear. That's the root of it. And thought is the whole movement of registration in the brain. So, can, so the possi- I'm asking you a question, is it possible not to register psychologically anything? That can only happen if you have understood No, 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 not, no, no, so just, you can't, not if you have understood. When? When you have understood. No. Just see the truth of it. Either the truth or the falsehood. Then from truth you can argue, you can explain. It will always be true. But if it is false, it will equally be your explanations will be false. We better start tomorrow, don't you?